Hey there! Welcome back to our next video on getting started with V-Ray for SketchUp. Today, we're going to explore the various methods to create materials in V-Ray. Be sure to download the project files linked in the description so you can practice with the scene at your own pace. Before we start, it's good to know that V-Ray is going to render any materials you've already made in SketchUp. Let's right-click on the Material tab in the V-Ray Asset Editor to select the type of material we want to create. Here you can see all the material types V-Ray offers. Let's go with Generic for now and you'll see it appear in our list. This generic V-Ray material is super versatile and acts as a base for most of the materials we'll create today. It's great for mimicking a wide range of surfaces, from plastics to metals, glass, and more. Double-click on the new material to give it a name. This keeps our files tidy. Then, select an object from your scene, right-click, and apply the material. We just created our first V-Ray material. Click on the right side of the screen to open the right flyout menu. Here, we can tweak the material properties and see a preview of how it will look. Let's explore its parameters. First up, we have Diffuse which is basically the main color of the material. In the real world, all objects reflect light to some extent. So, let's add some reflections from the Reflections tab. By default, the reflections are set to a black color, meaning there are no reflections. Making it white will greatly increase the reflections. Okay, now we can see the reflections. We can control how sharp these reflections are by adjusting the reflection glossiness. If we reduce it to something like 0.85, the reflections will become much blurrier. Now we've created a basic plastic shader. Let's continue by making a new generic material and learn how to create a simple metal shader. The first thing to understand about metals is that their appearance mostly comes from the reflections. This means we set the diffuse to pure black and crank up the reflections to white. But it doesn't look quite right yet. To get that shiny metal effect, we need to turn on Reflection IOR and increase it to around 8. IOR stands for Index of Refraction, which is different for each real-world material. This makes the reflections brighter and gives us the metallic look. However, to achieve a more matte finish, we can reduce the reflection glossiness slightly. Now, let's look at another way to create a realistic metal effect. In reality, IOR values are close to 1, as we can see in this table. By sticking to these values, we can create a metal material that is physically closer to how real-world metals look. Create a new generic material, give it a name and apply it. Set the reflection color to pure white for high reflectivity. Now, let's increase the metalness parameter to 1. The effect is very similar to our previous chrome material, but this time we're not dramatically increasing the reflection IOR. To soften reflections, we can reduce the glossiness. But for this workflow, we usually use another parameter, the reflection roughness. It works similarly, but in reverse. So to achieve the same result, we need to reduce the roughness quite a bit, from 0.8 for glossiness to 0.2 for roughness. This will have the same sharpness or blurriness. Now we can use the diffuse color as a base color or so-called albedo and we can really easily create gold or copper, for example. In the upper right corner, I've linked a useful article where you can learn more about this process and see a table with real-world examples on how to create physically accurate materials like gold or aluminum. Up next, we'll create a glass material. Usually glass materials don't have a diffuse color so we can switch it to black and then make it highly reflective. Also, change the refraction color to white in the refraction tab. Just like reflections, a black color in the refraction means the material won't be refractive. If it's white, it'll be super refractive. Let's apply that and see the outcome. Great, we just made our first glass material. Let's check out other parameters here. These options simulate the fact that thick objects look less transparent than thin ones. To reduce the effect, the depth parameter can be increased. Note that the fog color effect depends on the absolute size of the objects and is dependent on the scene. To make the glass look like frosted glass, we can reduce the refraction glossiness. This blurs the refractions just like with the reflections. Of course, it wouldn't make sense to have frosted glass with sharp reflections, so we should also reduce the glossiness.
let's return to the table material. What if we want to add texture instead of just a color? Click on the square next to the diffuse color and select the map type you need. In this video, we'll only focus on two types. The first is the bitmap. We will now load a texture from our computer. I'll use a wood texture. Okay, it looks like wood, but the reflections are too perfect. It looks like a picture of wood, not like actual wood, with surface structure. To add this, we can use the wood texture for the bump slot. In, that definitely looks more bumpy, so we need to reduce the effect. We can do that by adjusting the slider below or entering a number. Let's try 0.1. That looks much better, and notice how the bumpiness affects the reflections too. Now we have a more realistic look. Next up, let's create a fabric material. Let's start by adding a diffuse texture For a better preview in the swatch, we can select the type of material preview from the drop-down. There are several types, but we'll go with fabric. Apply the texture and see how it looks. If you want more control over the texture, we can wrap it with the color correction. From here, we can adjust its color, saturation, brightness, contrast, and more. Let's also add a bump texture and see the result. All right, it definitely looks like fabric now, but something is still missing. Real fabric often has a specific glossy effect. To recreate that, let's switch to advanced mode. For this video, we'll focus on just one parameter, the sheen layer. This adds a glossy layer that gives us that fabric feel. The color controls the sheen layer's color, while the sheen glossiness controls how shiny the fabric appears. Reducing this value can make it look more like velvet or satin. We'll keep it in the middle. Once we're happy with the material, it's a good idea to rename the textures in the asset editor to keep things tidy. Okay, now we know how to create some common materials. This will help us to modify already existing ones like those from Chaos Cosmos. Plus, we can learn from them by checking their properties. First, let's import a metal material. As mentioned before, we can learn a lot by looking at how different materials are made. For instance, this metal material includes textures not just in the diffuse slot, but in the reflection slot too. The white color in the reflection implies a more reflective surface. The texture in the reflection can help us easily specify different levels of reflections. This is similar to the reflection glossiness, where some parts of the material can have sharper reflections. Things like dust, scratches, or other imperfections can be mimicked. Let's apply this texture. If you're having a hard time positioning the texture on a complex shape, you can just enable the Try Planner option in Cosmos. This will neatly project the texture. Let's also check out a wood material. Here again, we see that textures are not only placed in the diffuse slot, but also in the reflection and reflection glossiness slots. And if we add a fabric material, we can see it's created in a very similar way, with textures in the diffuse, bump, and sheen layer slots. One more thing to remember before we finish is that we can control the size of the materials, not only from the SketchUp Material tab, but also from V-Ray. If we expand the Cosmos material in the Asset Editor, you will see that the size and rotation of all textures in the material are controlled from a single UVW placement. Essentially, the V-Ray UVW placement texture works as a custom mapping source that can be shared between different textures. I hope you found this video on shading in V-Ray for SketchUp interesting and useful. Be sure to check out the other Getting Started with V-Ray videos. See you there.